Hey guys, been a while since I've done a, a video. Um, partly busy, partly it's winter, solar doesn't mix. Um, I always found it funny when Julie and I like, used to say that and used to think, well, you can still be getting on with things, but it does put it to the back of your mind. Um, I thought I'd do a, a short update video to see where we're at kind of things. Um, I haven't done a lot with the BMS that I had been working on, um, which was uh, this board, which the, the Wemos, which then used these individual um, modules that hooked into the um, each pack. So you'd need one of these per pack um, with the AT Tiny. Um, part of the reason why I've held off doing a lot of work on that is because a guy, Stuart uh, Pit Pitaway, um, came up with a, a board and um, Stuart just absolutely blasted ahead with things. Um, and he designed these boards. A bit hard to see there, a um, bit washed out. Um, and wherever I've been seeing anyone mention BMS DIY on the Powerwall for, um, forums or the Facebook group, or whatever, I've been mentioning this because it blows away the work that I've done away. Um, so yeah, so it, it's been good. Um, one of the hurdles I have faced with this was initially getting all the bits and pieces together, um, and there's a lot of components. Um, He's done a GitHub page, um, which the URL's on there. I'll link down below. Um, but yeah, he's done a great design. I think this is the second revision now. He's going to do a slightly updated one again, I believe. Um, one of the tracks that um, Adam Welch had pointed out that maybe could be a little bit thin, so I think he's going to revise that. Um, I'm still not at a point where I've got this functioning. Um, and that's down to myself rather than Stuart. So I've just been plugging away. I had some init issues initially, um, which I can only put down to my stupidity. Not sure quite what they were yet, but I did burn a track up on one of the boards. Um, one of the other boards just didn't seem to function. Um, and Because I had those couple of hurdles, I haven't progressed massively with it. Um, but what I have done, I've taken the time to get all the parts and pieces together um, and started slowly making these boards up. Um, I took advantage of the um, the offer, I think it was all PCB had on, um, to get a load of these boards for something like £4.50, um, including DHL delivery, which was amazing. Um, I have been through a couple of boards, um, but I've got 9 or 10 left. Um, I'm running 7S, so that should be sufficient. Um, so one of the things, that just to say that this is what I was looking at, I'm still considering doing my original design, which would be a far simpler... Um, design and I'm not saying that as a better thing just it, it is far simpler um, a lot of through hole components rather than um, soldering these now I did hand solder one of these so it is possible um, but the better way is to use solder paste um, so to that effect um, I bought a couple of tubes of this from AliExpress um, now I've noticed that this is the exact same that um, Julian eyelet has been using um, where he's just basically taking the top and just cut off the end there and it produces this big giant blob. Um, I'd really recommend going the route of a, um, a blunt needle, um, which is kind of what I've got here. Um, and it just makes it easier to get such a, a small application. Um, one thing I did notice is that, as you can see, it just comes here. Um, with a cap on, so obviously bought the blunt needle and it's just a cap on the other end. Um, no plunger, so on a good old thingiverse um, and someone has a design for a plunger, um, that's 15 mil um, at its thickest point, um, which nicely fits in there. Um, and just allows you to squeeze out a small application. I'll put the link for that thingiverse design below. Um, one of the other, things that I did encounter is it's, I've never done any um, SMD as far as um, reflowing before um, with solar paste and it was getting the right amount on, um, which I found tricky. So what I've done is um, I had a quick search around the old internet and found a few resources um, and a guy on Hackaday had come up with a great um, 
site where you can put in your um, two files that you would export from either Eagle or KiCad, um, the contour file and the solder um, paste file. You upload those and it produces an STL, which gives you this, uh, which might not seem much, but you can see it's just basically a stencil. Um, there you go, that's better, a stencil. And it's got a small lip down the bottom. And what that allows you to do is to place that onto there and its tolerances depend on your 3D printer. Um, what I did find is that it's um, printed extremely thin. Now I did this on a CR10. Um, I do have a Prusa Mark III so I might try it on that. But basically it's two layers thick. Um, and I was a little bit impatient. I didn't wait for it to fully cool down. Um, but as you can see there, that pretty much lines up great. Um, and what you can do is you can then just squeeze out that little bit of solder paste um, and then you're not getting it anywhere else on the board and then I think the idea is that the idea is it's so thin because then you can use it as a screen and then drag across and you've got a very li thin layer of solder paste that's been applied. Now I have noticed that there's two sections that um, depends on the tolerances of your 3D printer. Now you may struggle there um, where it's ended up creating the slits for four pins one side but not the other side. Um, it's going to be tricky to get rid of those. I do have some smaller nozzles that I could maybe try um, instead of a 0.4mm down to maybe the, I think got as far as 0 0.2 maybe 0 0.1 not sure I'll have to check. Um, but that is one thing to to look at. Um, it's interesting that depending on the orientation where we've got here the um, the ADUM chip, the eight pins there, they've printed great, nice things are, but that's the orientation that it, the X was this way and the Y that way. So that's being able to print easier. Um, the AT tiny surface mount, it's done four pins one side, two the others, I think I can cut the other two slits out and that's fine. Um, but the six pins of the um, regulator, 3.3 volt regulator, it hasn't printed very well. And as you can see, there's just two big globs either side. Well, two holes which will end up globs. Um, so maybe you need to be careful there. Um, so like you see, either a small nozzle or I could change the orientation. Um, but to be honest, the, the bigger pads, that would get the majority done. Um, you could just remove this mask and then you could maybe do those smaller ones individually, which would be... Um, a bigger head start anyway. Um, I did at one point believe that I had a faulty 3.3 um, volt regulator um, from AliExpress but I think that was just down to my stupidity. Um, I had placed a capacitor on C6 and C1 um, for the charge pump and for the um, input but then I'd forgot to place a capacitor on C2 um, and speaking with Adam Welsh he, he very kindly pointed out that maybe that's one to try and that's not allowing the um, the output uh, to fix a 3.3 and lo and behold as soon as I did that I started that working. Um, so I have got one of these soldered up um, if I can find it I'll show you um, but the issue I faced is that it's connecting to the um, Apologies for the noise, just gonna quickly search for this board. Um, yeah, there's a there's a board here, I sold it up. Um, but the issue I faced is that it is communicating with it um over the I squared C. Um is a connector and you know you can use one for in, one for out. Um but then the issue I found is that it communicates but then it wasn't given any readings. Um, and the only issue with an AT Tiny, especially on here, is trying to remotely debug. Um, there's an ISP header or an IC ICSP header, um, but nothing configured as far as software serial or anything like that. So it, it was a, I'm just working on debugging that. Um, but as soon as I've got that done, um, then I'll come back with another video. Um, Stuart has got. I think four or five of these soldered up and working so the board you know it's there these designs fantastic and the software to go with it is amazing as well it's worth having a look through um, what I am going to do is 
um, apply the logic that I'd done for these boards in my design, um, which was output into Grafana. Um, so I'm gonna merge that into Stuart's code, hopefully sympathetically, um, and try and use some of the cues, design cues that he's done on his interface, which is fantastic, the web interface. So um, hopefully, yeah, that'll allow me to get that up and running pretty quick. So as soon as I've got those little issues ironed out, I'll come back. Um, and also, like I mentioned, if you've got an opinion on whether you want to do, uh, would like to still use the old design, if you find that useful, um, let us know in the comment section below. Um, any other input on the solder mask, how to do it, please just put some in bo um, below um, in a comment. So please like, subscribe if you haven't already, and uh, thanks very much, guys.